going to go with some pinks and greens today with a little splash of purple. Rightio, there's my cups. Get my gloves on. And I'm going to go with some pinks and some greens. Now, I did one before and I had way too much paint and I think it was too thin so I scraped it. This size canvas, 30 by 40 centimeter or 12 by 16 inch, really only need about 500 grams of mixed paint. 700 grams for the bigger canvas, the 30 by 60 centimeter or 12 by 24 inch. I found that putting less paint on and stretching it more gives you better cells. So I have got one, two, three, four, five, six colors. So normally I'd have 50 grams of paint, 50 grams of pouring medium, which would end, end up being 600. But these two here, I've only done half a cup each. So that's 100 together. So that's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 grams of mixed paint. Um, silicone oil, I'm using the spot on treadmill silicone. And I'll put... Um, what do we want? What about nine or ten drops for this size? So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That'll do. So one drop in the smaller cups and two drops for the bigger cups. I won't do the white. We want that to stay nice and um, opaque and sink to the bottom. Although my white, the global white, it tends to get lost. I don't see it a lot in the pores. If I use the Liquitex Basics white, it really, really shows up. To give this a really good mix. I don't think I mixed it properly last time either. Now, there's only two drops in there, so you want it to have a nice good mix and get well dispersed into your paints. It's the torch that's going to then bring those cells up to the surface. It's not the amount of oil you use. Well, I guess, you know, the more oil, the, the more cells you're going to get, but it's the torch that's going to bring those, that oil up to the surface. Rightio, let's go. I put a tiny little bit of extra pink in because I want to finish with pink as well. So two layers of pink and then finish with pink. Probably won't use all this green. I don't want it to take over. The last pour that I did in these colours, the one that I've scraped, uh, the purple just took over. All you could see was purple. I was not happy, Jan. So now I've cut my purple down. I've only got half a cup of purple. After that uh, green meadow sort of a feel to the pour with some pretty pink flowers, I've been trying to do it for a while and haven't really had much success. Keep trying. Oh, I do need to tell you about the ratios of paint, don't I? They were all 50-50 except for this green one. I put in 50 grams of pouring medium and then I had to add 70 grams of paint because it's so thin. I think I'm only going to do one layer of purple. that'll be enough. I don't want too much purple in there. Okay, back to the pink. Yeah, it really took over. I'm probably going to complain this time. Where's all my purple? Because I haven't got enough. I think I put too much in the first layer, I haven't got much left over, but then I only had half a cup of the green anyway, this dark green. I thought maybe it would be the one to really take over, but surprisingly the purple did. That dioxazine purple that I made. Um, now this cup hasn't got as much in as the others. I haven't got very much white actually, I'm going to have to just put white into two of these. Obviously put too much white in my first layer. Do that. 
All right, now more of this hibiscus. It's a pretty pink colour. Now, once I flip these cups over, I'll show you what the colours are. I have got a recipe on how to make hibiscus. It's in one of my YouTube videos. So check that out if you want to mix this colour. And I'm sure all the different brands, like the different companies, they all make very similar paint colours. Something in there. Mm, I might put the light pink next to that pink for this last layer. Yeah, so, you know, people say, oh, well, what colour matches your global pink with, you know, Liquitex? Well, I don't really know. I don't use a lot of Liquitex colours, but just have a play around with it, experiment. Or you can use my recipe and use, you know, their blue and their purple and so forth to make the colours that I've got on my video on how to mix colours. part of the experimenting isn't it it's fun get in there play around with paint experiment make some new colors there's a lot of talk about which pouring medium is best there's a lot of them out there pouring mediums varnishes gack glue flow troll just water but they all work they really do. Don't get too stressed on which one to get. Get whichever one you can get in your country, whichever one you can afford. It's not about the pouring medium. It's about the consistency of your paints when they're mixed with the pouring medium. That's what you have to get right. It really doesn't matter what pouring medium you use. You're going to get cells. If you have your right consistency and your oil and your heat, you're going to get cells. The cells will differ in shape depending on what you use, but you will get cells. And you'll get pretty patterns too, so don't stress too much about which pouring medium to use. I started on Floetrol, I've used Liquitex pouring medium. Um, I've moved on to glue, only because I prefer the, the round shape of the cell. But I was certainly getting cells three years ago when I was just using Floetrol. So, you know, it doesn't matter what you use. Just do whatever you can, can get. Variety of, oh, I better show you the colours, hey, standing here chatting. Dioxazine purple. Hibiscus. White. This one's green light. This one's green dark. And then the pink is called Rose. All right, let's flip these babies. So straight down. Um, I shouldn't need to use any extra paint, but I, I might just put some on the corners, but straight down so that I get my stripies. Oh, I like that. I don't know that I'll put that out just yet. And last one. When I did the flip cut previously on this, these are all running into each other already. Um, yeah, the mix was a little bit too too thin. And you know, less is more. Sometimes you don't need to have all that paint on your surface. much paint in this cup. But I want to be able to stretch my paint out. So I've got a little bit left in that cup if I need it, but seriously, you get a better result um, by just stretching out what you've got. Don't worry about these. If you fill those in and your whole surface is covered in paint, 
how then do you do you stretch it out you can't you're going to lose most of it you're better off stretching what's here and making pretty cells make it mix a little bit on the thick side and stretch it out um, rightio let's do a little bit of zigzagging to cover that side that side well, the corners are done but basically just those two sides and let these two meet up in the middle and have a bit of a kiss and say hi how you doing all right i think that's enough just some torching i don't want to over tilt as i said then i've got no nowhere else to to stretch my cells and for the cells to grow so i don't mind covering a little bit but not all of it so torch nice and high round and round keep it going round and round if you go in like an up and down motion you're much more likely to to get a caterpillar and keep it going round and round slowly that's what it likes doesn't like fast movements like up or down movements I found just gentle round and round seems to work oh, there's a caterpillar all right let's just see how that goes for a minute much better colors this time round don't even think I'm going to put that other video up because it's just nasty. Way too much paint, too purple, wasn't happy with it at all, so it's, yeah, just got scraped. I took a photo of it. I always take a photo of them whether I like them or not. And I can look back and say, oh yeah, that one had too much purple, too much paint. Cut back on that. So this is good I don't think I'll even want any more cells you know I look at this like this and you think oh there's so much blank space well yes there is but once you start tilting and your cells stretch you've got less blank space so don't overcrowd them this is going to be overcrowded here because it looks as if it's got blank space around it now but once you start moving them and they grow those cells grow you lose your blank space so don't over torch Right, so the weight of the paint's down here anyway, so let's get to those two little corners. And this can go, this little blobby bit of green. Don't really care for that. So it can go. Come back. Oh, I don't want to lose that dark purple. That's pretty, isn't it? Look at that. Maybe I can bring it back and then go for that corner because I don't want to lose all that purple. Just do that and kind of ease that over a bit. Mm. Overstretching my purple cells now. Go back. Alright, so that's done. Happy with that corner, little pink corner there. That hibiscus is pretty, isn't it? The stripes through it. So when you do your flip and drag and drag the paint down, that's when you get your stripes. And if you just get the big flip cups and you just flip them over in the middle, you don't tend to get your stripes. So it all depends on what you're after. Sometimes I just want a more of a gentle muted background and I just flip them over. And then sometimes like this, I want the stripes. So I flip and drag. Now I need to get all the way over here to this side. Just let it go over and back. Now see how that's gone wonky? I need to bring it back to the middle and so I can straighten up those lines before I continue. It's going to walk that left and right, left and right. And then here, where it's not really going any further, 
just going to do that, wet the canvas, help it out a little bit. You know, if I had plenty of paint, an extra 100 grams of paint, that wouldn't be a problem at all. It would be covered. But my cells would be small cells. I wouldn't have been able to stretch them. down for a sec and have a look at it so obviously up here is much busier than down here so I'm going to turn it around and then I'm going to tilt it that way a little bit to move all this it's a bit heavier on this side more cells they're smaller so what I'm doing now is I'm stretching them out too much they don't you don't have to stretch them out to get rid of all that down there because then you get rid of those but then these will all be stretched out and then you think well I have to go that way to get these back so even it up a little bit of stretching there a little bit of stretching there it's okay as long as your majority you're happy with don't you love those stripes mm -mm. and when you get the stripes like this you can't really tell how many cups I've used. I mean, I, I know, and you know, because there's one, two, three, but you could say, okay, well, there's one here, two, that one's three, four, five. Like, you just don't know because all the stripes kind of blend in together. So that's, it's really pretty, I think, having those stripes. I wouldn't mind straightening this up, but I have to bring the weight of the paint back to the middle so that I can straighten that line up and then go down stretch those cells you see what I did straightening up that line a little bit there okay so I think I'm happy with that and you know what I'm not even going to torch again sometimes I torch afterwards and then I get these little tiny cells and then I think why did I do that because I've just ruined a beautiful background with these little tiny cells that have popped up so you know just you can leave them it doesn't have to have a million cells in there let's check the sides it's a blank bit just there not a terrible amount of paint wasted with this pour because I mean look at that there's not a lot is there a little bit and uh, you have to agree the cells are a better shape sometimes when you've got too much paint and you know you can't stretch them oh, I, just, I always do that I miss and I stick it in there um, what was I saying when you've got too much paint your cells, you think it's going to work because, you know, you just say, well, I've got so much paint, I can just tip it all off or I can stretch it. But your cells, they can't stretch properly. They kind of go really elongated and, and out of shape. It's hard to explain. But when you've got less paint and you can stretch your cells properly, it's a much better outcome. I hope that makes sense to you. Makes sense to me. <laughs> you can have a look back on one of my videos. I can't remember which one it is now, but I had a lot of paint on it. And um, yeah, it just didn't work. Okay. So I only just touched these corners, didn't I? Didn't have a lot of paint going over those. So just try and match up if you can. This is a bit dark, but at least it's pink. So, and check my last little corner around here. Hey, my white showed up a little bit more on this one. 
muddy. These colours muddy really quickly, don't they? Just put that there and let it run down. There's not much. Actually, here's some green. That would probably work better than that mud colour. But that, that's better, isn't it? Much better. Okay. Not that anyone really looks at your corners. And then what do you do with such a little canvas, hey? I don't even know what I'm going to do with it. Who wants it? I should start giving away some of my canvases. Hey, see, I don't do anything with these. I think they're too small to sell. They're just my little practice ones. I reckon if someone pays for postage, I'm happy just to send it to you for free. Get rid of it. Do another one. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Let's get these gloves off. Take you down for a close up. I'm actually surprised I've still got a little bit of, there's like a quarter of a cup of that paint in there still. Um, and it hasn't gone too muddy, yeah. so happy with that. I know you guys are probably yelling at me, don't do it, don't do it, but look at this. It's just a little cute water balloon, a little small one. Now, I've done big balloons and a big glove, um, you know, to, to do the presses and things like that. But let's try with just a little guy because it's only a little canvas. Uh, let's just do little ones and see what happens. So I don't know if I want to go into the actual cell. If you go into the cell itself, the cell makes a petal. If you just go into a space like this with no cell, you don't get a petal, you just get like a blurred outline. So it's kind of a toss up. Um, if you use the cells, it's a really pretty. Um, and then, I don't know, but then you lose your cells. So I might do a bit of both. I'm certainly going to go in here where this is, this is kind of big and blobby. So let's start up here. And I've got you down nice and close because I think there might be some pretty colours underneath here. So. Don't yell at me. I'm just going to go in this little bit here first, just little ones. Just like that. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Now, because there's only two cells involved in that, I don't have very good petals. So this is why if you're going to do this, you're better off doing it with petals involved. But um, yeah, I just want to see what it would look like with little little flowers. Mm, maybe it would be better if I chose areas that had cells. I if it's too late to torch. It's been sitting for about an hour. I don't know whether or not I could still get cells. Maybe not. Little tiny ones because it's um, the glue started or the paints still really wet really quite thick the paint see it's just sort of doing that blobby thing but the little tiny cells that I just made there they're giving us little petals even though they're tiny little cells they are giving us petals It's not really working because I've got so much paint. I probably need to come back to it a bit later on. There's a lot of paint on the surface. So the paint's just, it's coming up um, and it's just sort of running back down onto itself. So really not working with the little balloon. What about if I press a bit harder? No, still not. And because, as I said, there's no cell involvement in that, I'm not really getting much from it.
just seeing if I can get some more cells to pop up and maybe get a prettier flower. Because I, I torched there and I've got those little cells, so those are prettier. Let's try up here. Just going to get some little cells. They don't need to be big, they just need to be cells so that when the balloon dips into them, it creates a petal. Let's try up here again with these ones. That's better. See, I'm getting the paints getting thinner now because I've dipped so many times. So I'm actually getting some really pretty colours coming through there now. And I'm taking some of the paint away. I just have to keep going until I've really thinned out that paint in that section there. That one's really pretty, that one. And it's only little, as it, it kind of matches the canvas because it is so small. I'm going to have to do the same with these. Just keep going until I've removed a lot of that paint. And because I'm bringing up fresh paint, I'm kind of being able to bring up some more cells. I'm trying to go straight down and straight up, not to move it too much. <laughs> well, that's a bit tricky, trying to get some of that paint off. Alright, they're starting to look better now with a little bit of less paint on that surface. What do you think? Where else? Where else? I thought it would work better than this, but you know, it's just so much paint there. I should like scoop it out. I just have to keep doing this until I can remove some of it. Fold that over. A little bit of paper towel here that I've got. Oops, don't touch the side. Make a few more cells. I turned that balloon around so I could get some pink on the other side. Here again, I'm going to have to get some of that paint off. I guess if I'd left it maybe overnight. Actually, that one's pretty. I'll leave that one as it is. If I left it overnight, the paint would start to thicken, you know, dry a little bit, uh, and then it might be easier. Don't like you. Go over you again. And then I'll turn the balloon and go that way. That's pretty. Um, and then we need some more kind of about here. So again, dip, dip, dip until I get a lot of that paint off. You can see it's still making a little puddle in the middle. So just keep going until you get it looking like a flower, not so much like a puddle. Just got to be careful you don't take too much paint off though. And then it'll have a, a bald canvas. So I've torched there to get some little cells up. And my canvas is starting to go bald there, so I'll have to be careful. Put some back. I'm going to have to dip into something else and then into there because I can see 
blank canvas there. So let's dip into this one and then into that one. Okay. That one's done. This one could go again. Yep. They're kind of cute, aren't they? A little like this. Where else? Here. So that's when I could put my paint back somewhere, couldn't I? Like that. Uh, the other one was better. Alright. Leave that one. Keep going with this one. Give it a bit of a torch, bring some little cells up and dip it again into those little baby cells. Okay, mm, let me have a look. Go around here. Um, I think we need sort of one up here on the very edge. Not much happening in this corner. Let's take some paint off again. So that's three little dips, a bit of a torch, another dip, beautiful, quite like that, I like having the cells around the outside, I think that looks quite pretty, and then to balance it we need another one up here, I need a new piece of paper towel, let me get rid of this one and get another one. No, you can't really see the edge here. I've zoomed you right in so that you can see what I'm doing close up. Just for a change. Right, let's dip again. And touch into that corner. And dip again. Okay, I'm liking how the purple's coming through because I didn't have very much purple. I really lost it and I didn't use a lot of purple. This was the one that I, you know, I didn't use very much. So it's nice having some of that purple come through. Um, I wonder where else there's some purple. I don't really like this one very much. I know I've been going over that one a few times. This one looks a bit muddy there. I don't really like that one. Put some paint back there on that one. Look, there's some purple under there. Let's get rid of some of that paint. One more. Yep, I think that'll do. That'll be all right. Let's get some rid of some of this paint. You don't like this one with that big blob there incorporated into it, but there's not much I can do about that one at all. Um, Here. This has got some of the magenta under it. Give that a bit of a torch, bring up some cells, dip into the cells. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where else? Where else? Um, about here. I don't want to dip straight into that corner. I quite like that corner. So just about here some of that paint off. And torch. I guess because these are such little flowers, you can do more of them without them taking over the whole surface, can't you? Alright, so that's Sort of the outside done. I need to do one kind of in the middle now just to balance it out and then that will probably be enough. Let's get some of that paint off again. Wipe it straight onto my paper towel down here. So 
a lot of paint on that one. Bit of a torch. What are we thinking? What do we think? Do we like it? I think that one was better before I dipped it again. Probably have to do a, oh, a bigger dip. On the corners, uh, it's easy for them to go bald, you see. Let's take some of this paint here. Looks as if it's got quite a lot there and just pop it there. Yeah, that's better. That one's nicer now. It's incorporated those others and that one looks gorgeous. This one seems to have too much paint on it still. Okay. Um, and this one can just be a little bit bigger. You can have some of that pink on you. Yeah. All right. I think that will do. I like it. I just had fun with a little tiny balloon, really. I mean, how cute's that? Uh, you can get the little water balloons. Don't put water in it, just put air in it. But it's a good little size if you just want to do a, a small area. Um, you can do a bigger canvas and just do more little balloon dips. You don't have to use a huge balloon. Just for something different, hey? You know I like experimenting. All right. That will be it. Let me take my gloves off. Didn't get a lot more purple up, but I've got a little bit of purple, so I'm happy with that because it really didn't show very much purple at all, did it? Okay. Um, well, I'll take you down. All right, I'll take you down. Let's have a quick look. seems to be brighter down here when you look at it more close up than up there on the tripod. So they do look like pretty flowers, don't they? Gorgeous. And the cells are pretty. I've still got some uh, background. It'd be nice putting, um, well, if I could draw, I can't draw, but like put some dragonflies on there and couple of little frogs they kind of look like lilies sitting in a sort of a, a mossy pond I know it's not blue but just the greenery of it with the, the pink flowers reminds me of a lily pond and that flower is really pretty there the one that's got the purple on it I like that one I haven't covered up too many of my cells. I've kept the cells and I've basically just dipped into the background, the blank areas around the cells. So hopefully you'll agree that it was worth doing. It was, it's pretty. I like it. And uh, I've got some more colour come up through because when you dip, your balloon, you know, you get more colour coming through from underneath, which is great. I love it. So there you go. I'll see you for the next one. Let me know if you like it or whether I should have just left it. All right. Too late now. Can't go back. Bye for now.